Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The 2010 Football World Cup was the 19th official World Cup tournament organized by FIFA and was also the 11th World Cup event in which Adidas sponsored the ball. In today's video, we are going to talk about the official ball used during the 2010 World Cup. It was called the Jabulani ball. The word Jabulani meant to bring happiness in Zulu. But the irony was that the players hated it, especially the goalkeepers. Goalkeepers have to predict where the ball will go in order to block it, right? They also don't have the freedom to run around the field to adjust as the ball flies. A common complaint from the players was that it was very difficult to predict the trajectory of the ball after kicking. In this video, we'll be discussing why this ball was so unpredictable and also the basic aerodynamics behind it. At first glance, a football seems to be a perfectly round sphere, but this is actually not true. There is always a slight offset as it was downright impossible to make a perfect sphere. Conventional footballs are generally made by stitching 20 to 32 pentagon and hexagon panels together. The stitches are also present in the external area of the ball. Well, because of this, the balls generally have deeper grooves on its surface. But this was not the case with the Jabulani ball. The ball was made of eight rubber panels thermally bonded together with internal stitches. Because of this, Adidas was able to manufacture the roundest ball ever made at that time. Due to the lack of external stitches, the ball was also much smoother than conventional balls. Now, you might think since the ball is very smooth, it should be able to travel much faster, right? Well, actually, no, that's not the case here. A heavily textured ball can induce a more turbulent airflow around the ball, which reduces the overall drag. Because of this reduction in the drag, the ball will be able to travel much farther. All these statements sound a little bit counterintuitive, right? Don't worry, we'll explain them all in detail. For the purpose of explanation, let's take a golf ball as an example. As a golf ball flies through the air, the airflow around the ball interacts with the surface of the ball and greatly affects the amount of drag. If the golf ball was smooth, the air flowing closest to the surface would just continue on their flow path and not stick to the ball. This creates a detached airflow behind the ball. This detached airflow creates a low pressure zone. Because of this low pressure zone, the ball tends to have increased drag. Think of it in this way. As the ball flows through the air, there is a small vacuum that is sucking the ball backwards and slowing it down. Adding dimples over the surface of the ball drastically changes the manner in which the air flows over it. The tiny dimples on the surface of the ball lead to turbulent air. When the air comes in contact with the dimples, it flows through the dimple and tries to attach itself. By the time it reaches the end of the dimple, the stream of air detaches and again attaches itself to the next dimple and so on. This causes a small region of turbulent air which flows along the boundary of the ball. This drastically reduces the low pressure zone formed behind the ball. So a smaller low pressure zone means a much lesser pressure difference between the front and the back of the ball, in turn much lesser drag. And because of this lesser drag, the ball will be able to travel much farther. A golf ball with dimples can travel almost twice the distance of a ball without dimples. This is the same reason why the Jabulani was so hated by football players. Due to its high shape accuracy and surface finish, it had a much bigger low pressure zone trailing the ball. A much bigger zone meant more drag, which in turn meant the ball traveled lesser distance. This was also the reason why the trajectory of the ball was unpredictable during long passes and shootouts. The fact that the Jabulani became unpredictable during these long passes really helped Spain when in 2010, the Spanish team relied almost entirely on short, precise passes without long kicks that made the ball unstable. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. We'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.